uh, Raghu, uh, yeah. talking about food and health, yes. um, what's your take on the current food system? Yeah. Like, are we, uh, are we focusing more on quantity or the quality, mm -hmm. which should be a better way exactly, yeah. to you? Yeah. I think the story of food uh, uh, has taken a dramatic uh, uh, turn for the past uh, 40, 50 years. Uh, yes, earlier, you know, we used to talk about, uh, uh, I mean, hunger and malnutrition was a, a major issue. But today, we have the issue of overnutrition and obesity. Uh, I typically, you know, there are different sides to this whole story. There is, a, uh, there is an anecdote when, you know, uh, G.K. Chesterton, who was a very bulky guy, uh, was talking to Bernard Shaw. Bernard Shaw was, uh, you know, a bag of bones. You know, he, he was very chacky right. and all that. So, uh, G.K. Chesterton wanted to pull his leg and he says, Mr. Shaw, anybody looks at you, they will think that there is drought and famine in this country. Because he was so famished, you know. Then uh, Shaw, a brilliant fellow, he said, Mr. Chesterton, when they look at you, they know the reason also. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that's the way, that's a kind of food management. But what's wrong with the food system today? As you rightly said that, you know, quantity and quality don't go together. Typically, they say you take the large quantity of American apples, Washington apples that go round this earth are deficient in at least about four to 5,000 phytochemicals. So when okay. you have higher yield and quantity, hmm. uh, quality, you can't say the same thing about quality. But if you see the, another major problem in the food system today is the depth of diversity. Okay. You see, we had uh, all the ancient civilization, whether it is the Incas, the Mayas, the Harappans, or the Mesopotamian civilization, they all had, you know, large basket of food grain for their annual consumption. I mean, they had a broader basket of food. Okay. So when you have a broader basket of food, diversity of food in your daily diet, you don't have to worry about nutrition. Because diversity is the bedrock of good nutrition. Correct. So now we have quantity, quantity of what? In Indian situation, if you talk food mountains that we talk about, the food mountain pertains to two grains, rice and wheat. And in rice and wheat, again, a few handful varieties. You can count them on the fingertips. So I would say the biggest bane of the modern food system is the death of diversity. And when you lose diversity, you lose nutrients known and unknown. And as far as food is concerned, the, what we know happens to be just about 5% of what it is. Uh, I keep saying that, you know, if you see the, the, the knowledge of food is a gap uh, in the sea of ignorance. What we know is so little. Typically, they say about the physical world, you know, the universe. Uh, you know, universe consists of uh, of uh, visible matter, the matter that reacts with the light and that you can experience it or you can see it through the microscope and telescope. That is the visible world, uh, not just with the naked eye. But that constitutes just 5% of the matter. So what we do not know is 95% of the matter. Uh, that day in the physical science they say dark energy and dark matter. The similar dark energy and dark matter or igno ignorance exist in the way we understand food. So what we are lacking today, today they, see the, they find, they say that the foods are not just protein, fat, carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals, but there are a large number of phytochemicals, there are a large number of non-nutrients which function as nutrients. We have lost all of them. Most of them we have lost. And so the, the, why we have lost is simply because we have you know, there is a declining diversity, when there is depth of diversity, when there is a dwindling availability of varieties. You, it is common sense that you are not getting all you wanted uh, from the nature. So you, today you are getting your nutrient, these five components of your nutrients from five or six uh, foods. So it's a very narrow construct. Apparently it looks fine, you know, you have uh, you, you need five, new, five nutrients, you have five food and they give it. In animal feed, when we talk about what animals should eat, we talk about two grains, uh, corn and soya. 
what does a cattle eat how many kind of vegetables grass the animal is supposed to eat is the animal supposed to eat just two grains and humans are supposed to eat five grain are we a five grain animal two grain animal and can we say it suffices it gives you all the nutrients you need certainly not that is why we talk about today how can you make your diet more diverse so that the unknown nutrients the unknown phytochemicals the unknown antioxidants you get through these foods typically they say nutrition that we know is the tail of the dog and the dog is unknown so when the dog with diversity the dog is diversity when the dog is goes the tail has to follow so but today we are more focused on the tail so i feel that in the food system today that we have lost the diversity more than that you know today we have uh, we are we have excess of a few nutrients take for example india we have 28 million tons of sugar oh my god and and what we require is hardly 15 million ton even that is too much okay. so we have 28 million so we have excess of one or two one or two you know nutrients which do not have uh, the other nutrients at all if you take sugar it's just sucrose and nothing else in it so you have 28 million tons of it mm. and you have fat you have huge quantity of fat and sugar and today they say in the modern food system like you ask what's wrong with the food system i can say that today the problem is more to do with the what should do good to us the nutrients the nutrient that are supposed to do good to us do good do good to us we consume excess we produce excess and we sell excess and all the processes food today are loaded with these two or three fat sugar and salt so today the food system has gone wrong because we take the same required nutrients at a smaller scale at a much higher level leading to morbidity and diseases in addition to that we have this humongous problem of toxic residues accumulating in our food look at the way i sometimes it it, it you know i i fail to understand we have 1500 food additives as thickeners thinners flavors preservatives and flavor treatment whiteners you know you add colors that's why they say humans have uh, become so modern that they have learned the art of being able to fool all their senses with artificial ingredients why do we have to have 1500 food additives why should you have 1000 pesticides herbicides fungicides they say finally suicide hmm. you know the kind of plethora of chemicals that we do indulge in the farming right. and uh, it, it, it's, it's a factory farming hmm. take for example antibiotics antibiotic why when when you think think of antibiotic you think of antibiotic being given to treat some infectious diseases of course the bacterial infected diseases not the viral ones not the flu kind of diseases but you will be surprised that today 80% of the antibiotics manufactured in the world whether it is us or india or china today is not going for treating diseases but for production of higher quantity of meat right you give these antibiotics and then they put on they disturb the gut microbe and it metabolizes more energy and then they put on more weight and the typical word that they use in the intensive animal farming today for antibiotic they don't call it as antibiotic they call it as growth promoters so do we need this kind of gro- antibiotic led growth promotion it's a kind of a cancerous growth i think it, right. it, it defeats the common sense so these are some of the larger issues that we have mm-hmm. with the food production uh, system today that we with the food food we are able to produce large quantity sans nutrition density uh, also riddled with you know the toxic residues and of course this production system itself has deprived the soil of its uh, fertility the water of its natural state and you know today you have uh, the contaminated water contaminated soil and this kind of a thing and uh, and because the yield alone is the greed that is why some people call green revolution as greed revolution of course it fed the people of course it gave the quantity of food but did it give the diversity did it give what people want typically they say they ask this question what is a food security what is a food nutrition security the fao defines food security as having enough food to meet your nutrient requirement in line with your cultural context so do we have it we do not have it hmm. 
So that I feel is a humongous problem. Today we eat what market gives. Today we eat what government doles out. Today we eat what company wants farmers to produce. A Philippines farmer was asking, what rice are you growing this year? He says, I don't know which university, which seed university is giving. He doesn't know today. Today the farming is no longer culturally embedded activity. Mm. It is a uh, you know kind of a market-led uh, production system. And the market is interested in producing things that they can sell their seed, pesticides, and fertilizers, and all that. So I feel that this is a serious problem mm. with our food production uh, system today. Uh, talking about food production yeah. system, yeah. so. Um, does the responsibility lies with the system or with individuals or both? I mean, ah. is being we are probably ignorant because uh, we don't have access to the information. The system doesn't give us the information, or is it the other way around that we are not even <laughs> looking for some kind of information? Yeah. No, you are right. See, uh, normally it is said that. Uh, 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 individuals are educated, the community is uh, strong, the society is good, public opinion is very powerful and it, it, uh, it demands what it wants. So that is good for their health and well-being right. and all that. That's how things should be. But that's not, that's not what is happening. What is happening is it is a market inspired, market drives the uh, thing, market will you know manipulate, market will tell you what you should eat, how you should eat and things like that. So individual knowledge that we see, take for example the US where you have your statistics, large amount, billions of dollars, I think something like 100 billion dollar is the money spent for food advertisement. But for food education, hardly 3 billion dollar. So what are you being educated on? You know, you are right. so the food education, information, the conversation, and the whole churning is our own brand. See, somebody said that King in India, Kingfisher is not a brand, is not a bird, but a beer. Because you, 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 right, you, 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 you see, I ask people, what do you, uh, what do you, which oil you use? People don't say whether it is a sunflower, groundnut, or soybean oil. They say a brand. brand. Then I ask them, do you know the oil that you are using? People are ignorant. So I think we eat brand and live brand and we forget what we are really, you know, uh, what we are supposed to eat, what is good for our health, what's good for our well-being. So individuals have to be empowered. But unfortunately, individuals have been, uh, I would say, they have, uh, they, the market and the system today has dismantled people's learning. See, today there is a disconnected knowledge. See, individual is fine, but individual should be a part of the society, family, community, see this is the public good. Hmm. So when there is public good, the private evil doesn't happen. But we are talking about a private good at the cost of the public evil, then there is a problem. See, you can't evolve private solution for all public problems. Correct. Uh, I agree that as a conscious consumer, today are we a conscious consumer? Do we know what we want? Now I all may see, they typically say, said, you know, what is seen is sold. Okay, so what is seen, unfortunately, is not the good thing. I want to eat black rice. I want to eat red rice. I want to eat millets. Mm. I want to eat diverse food range, vegetables. I don't want to eat a few varieties. I don't want to eat white rice. But I go out there in the market, what you see, the choice that you see, the humongous choice that is offered to human beings today, in the name of choice, there is a, that is why they say it's a tyranny of choice. You have choice, but you have no choice. So you go to a bakery, you have choice, you have got puffs, bread, bun, pastries and diversity you see. But fundamentally out of three ingredients. It's from vanaspati, hydrogenated fat, sugar and um, uh, what do you call the other one, um, uh, maida, the mm. refined yeah. wheat flour. Refined. So you have three ingredients and giving you a plenty and plethora of diversity. Mm. So that is, uh, that is, you know, there is a hollowness in the, in the diversity that apparently, you know, you seem to be experiencing. Right. So um, then what do you say would be a good start to, um, to good food or mm. to nutritious food as individuals? How can we approach or how can we go? take the path. Yeah, yeah. I would say that, uh, you know, uh, where education is really required, where information is really required. You know, typically they say we have right to information, but no right information. Is the information loaded age. That's why they say where is wisdom lost in knowledge, where is knowledge lost in uh, right. information, you know. So we are information filled world, hmm. bits and parts of information. 
you know, it's not the wholesome information. The information, see, they say the whole can never be matched by some of its parts. Um, now, talking about the right food, nutritious food, as an individual, how should I start mm. being uh, choosing the nutritious food and mm. having the right diet? Mm, yeah, that's true. See, the, normally they say today in the market, you have, you have plenty of choice uh, and that simply says what not to choose. You know, they say you have plenty of choice not to choose from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, typically it is said, you know, that in, in, in mathematics, 2 plus 2, what is the right answer? There's only one right answer, 4. But how many wrong answers can be? Innumerable. So that way we have to a lot of wrong choice and they are flooded. They call you out. They are there when the billing count, near the billing counter. They are visible everywhere. The wrong products are visible everywhere, available everywhere. But the right products you have to, you know, you have to, you have to consciously choose. You have to search for it. You have to choose from the from the maze of this, uh, you know, the multitude of the wrong foods that are available in the market. So it's actually for an individual, for a conscious consumer, it's a difficult time. Typically, they said, what is a good government? Good governance. Somebody said the good governance is all about making it easy to do good and difficult to do bad. That's good governance. Yeah. So in, if, you, if you apply that to the food today, we have a problem you know, in, in being able to choose the right uh, uh, variety of food. But of course, as I said, you can also come out with a negative list. What is a good food? Uh, you can eliminate the hydrogenated fat. You can eliminate, I mean, reduce the sugar, salt. You can use the refined flour. You can re reduce the devitalized foods. You can reduce and you know minimize segregated, separated nutrients. You see, that's the way. If I have to eat rice, how do I eat rice? I have to eat rice which has been dehulled, not okay. polished twelve, 12 times and devitalized and then consume fiber separately. That's not the way I eat food. So it's common sense tells you that for a for a you know good food, you it has to be wholesome. It has to be as natural as possible. For example, how what is the best way to consume fruit? And of course, today you see there is so much of uh, um, propaganda to consume fruit juices. And if you look at a fresh fruit juice, and then you see the label, then it says twenty percent concentrate, and rest of it is water. So that they say has got uh, so much of it. And they also the claim that the fruit juice has got 9 nutrient, 20 nutrient, whereas a fruit doesn't make any claim. But what is the best thing to eat a fruit? To eat fruit as fruit. I typically say okay. that if you have to eat an orange, peel it and you know, you can, when you peel, you get the smell of orange hmm. and the way you spit out a seed, there is a, you know, that itself can be a pleasure. And what the fruit gives you, it just doesn't give you sugar, it gives you fiber, it gives you phytonutrients, it gives you a whole lot of other non-nutrients which are really going to do good to you. Mm -hmm. And there is an experience of eating, you know. Eating is not just biochemical, it is cultural, social, spiritual, right. you know, you become what you eat. And, you know, in, in, the, in the Indian Upanishadic philosophy, they say, what you eat, eats you. And you okay. become what you eat. And mm. the eater gets eaten. Mm. You see, that's the kind of organic link we have with the food today. But for a conscious consumer, I would say, I think, you know, we are, we are, we are struggling hard to know more, you know, information age, information at the fingertips, and a whole lot of things. And we should be very careful about what, how do you discriminate this information? How do you choose the information? And common sense tells, you see, Mark Twain was asked how to double money. He said, fold it twice and put it in your pocket. <laughs> You know, as right. simple as that. Right. So I think the, those things, if you remember, it's not easy. And in, 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 in Mahabharata, Arjuna asked Sri Krishna that I am confused what to do. What do I do? You have said so many things, you know, when he said Gita. Then Sri Krishna says, when you are confused, just follow whatever I, what your elders do. You know, what your forefathers did. That is good enough. See, for example, they say, what is a good food system? They say, eat food. Don't eat food that your grandmother doesn't recognize. So if your grandmother doesn't recognize it, which means that this is not a food that has been culturally, traditionally transmitted. It is an invented, manufactured, you know, concocted, you know, nutritionally claimed food that is rolled out to you. Mm. So these are some things. I think in food, see, it is always said, 
Never go from nutrition to food, always from food to nutrition. Always see whether it is a part and parcel of your tradition. How, when was the idli dosa was invented? We do not know. Hmm. How many years? We do not know. But it is at least 10,000, 15,000 years of you know agriculture, cooking, it has evolved. We have adopted. Through evolution, through selection, through survival instinct, fortunately we have chosen the best of the foods. We know which are the mushrooms poisonous to us, which are the foods, the edible foods, which are the non-edible foods. Modern man is caught in the nutrition world, but he doesn't know food. Mm. But if you take our ancestors, our forefathers, you take any tribal person today, he has a broad knowledge of the diversity of food. He can name them. He, can, he knows the seasons. He knows the reasons. He knows when to consume what. You know, he knows when to consume during pregnancy, what to consume during sickness, what not to eat during sickness. A, a, a tribal person, an uneducated person probably today has better answer than a confused educated person.